So this is my 1942 Colchester The Master 6 inch. Uh, it was kindly donated to me some years ago and it's taken a few years to get it back together. And one of the things I said in the last video was that I wanted to make a check backstop for it. It's a lovely old machine, 80 this year. Flat out she'll do 550 RPM. On the low end she'll do 20. And it's very much like an old British bike. Needs an oily rag. She's got a tendency of spitting oil everywhere. But that's by and by. She works well. There's a bit of slop, a bit of play, but you can't really expect anything for a lathe which is 80 year old. So what I've been doing, and I forgot as usual, I've been turning a Morse taper 4.5. I didn't use the Joe Pie technique. I've got to be honest, uh, the stuff that he does is incredible. I use the Rustinox technique where I put a ruler into one of the tool holders, slackened the compound, slid it inside of the spindle and then moved it until everything touched and then locked it up. It's close enough at the end of the day what I'm making is nothing more than a plug, a spindle plug. No other type of plugs before anyone comments please. If anyone's wondering, yes this is actually flat out. At the end of the day, it is 80, and you can't expect uh, your grandmother to do a marathon, can you? So you're going to take it easy sometimes with it. Unfortunately, the compound slide is slightly short of doing the full length of this taper. So I will end up stopping towards the end. It's only about 12 mil, half inch away. And then just doing the final cut in that area. But it won't really matter. Uh, because I think with the length I've actually done it, it's going to be past the point where the taper engages inside of the spindle. Tell you what, I'm getting pretty good at this hand feeding as well. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. I'm going to deviate slightly. Uh, I watched a video by Matty, Matty's workshop, and he was making collet blocks. And I realised from what he was doing that I could actually make my own. Now, if I go back to the lathe for a second, you see I've got a bit of a problem. Well, it's not a problem, it's a gap. This is a, a gap bed lathe. Unfortunately, when I received this lathe in boxes, it hasn't got a gap, so I can't really run too far from the end. So what I thought about doing was making, out of a piece of hydraulic cylinder, a Morse taper 4.5, extended shaft, and then an ER32 on the end here. And when I seen Matty doing how he'd done his internal tapers, give me the idea to make this. So Matty. This part is your fault. But the reason I'm showing this is if you've noticed, I've marked it. And this particular mark here is how far this handmade taper will fit inside of the spindle. And what I've done, I've taken the measurement at this point, or actually I've taken the measurement about four millimeters or five millimeters further down the taper, and that was my largest diameter on the taper I'm making now. So the plug will sit subsurface. Later on you'll see the reason why. Because the old coal chest has got so much slack in its joints I'm afraid it's uh, not very kind to part it off. Uh, there's been many a bit of foul language. Um, me jumping out of the way as it bites, tears and destroys anything in the chuck. Unfortunately everything just has dragged forward and it's the end of it. So I've resorted to one of my first projects which is the band so just chop it off. So we're back at the lathe and the check is removed. And that in there is a MT 4.5. And here's the offending article. And I'll be completely honest, I cocked up. I dropped that into there. It should sit to about there. That's the plan. And it disappears down the pipe. My cock up, 
I thought I was following Rustin Ox's technique. I didn't. I followed my own technique that I made up in my head. And what I've done, I'll try and demonstrate. I put the ruler oh, let's try that, on the back of one of the tool holders. Fed that inside of the spindle and then adjusted the compound until it touched, making sure that this was running level to the center. I didn't take into consideration anything to do with that. And when I changed the angle on that from my initial setup, everything else changed. Because obviously if I was going in like that, then I changed the angle or going in an angle like that, I wasn't true. I needed to be true to the actual compound. So that was my mistake. I think what Rustinox did was put the rule in, hold it in place, again making sure it's parallel through the bore, and then indicate off the compound back and forth there until it was running parallel. That was my mistake. Rushing as usual instead of checking. But now, after a second attempt, we got one that fits. And I think you can probably see the way this is going. So with the chuck back on, just as a demo, because I haven't got no hex bar, you can see the plug is in place and the bolt is in. There's no lock in that on it, which you would do. But obviously, now, a nice bit of aluminium bar, you've got a permanent backstop, which is behind the jaws. So you can go down quite small with that. You could use a solid bar with a smaller rod inside of it to extend forward if you're doing really short stuff. And if you was doing, I say, half inch brown bar, you could use, I don't know, quarter sliding or whatever else inside of it. And it basically means then that you can extend your stops into the jaw area. So you could do really short uh, pieces on there. I hope this makes sense. I don't know if it's been done before. Something I thought of the other week. And uh, just so everyone knows, it's me ultra bright light on as well. So as soon as I get some X-bar and make little standoffs or whatever else to go inside of the chuck, I'll do a little update on that. And the other thing I've done, I've sacrificed one of the crutches. It's not a pogo stick. It's actually, if I can try and stretch out far enough, a butt prop, which allows me to plonk my butt on there and lean back slightly and relieving the pressure on my back when I'm using the mini machine or when I'm using the lathe. All I hope is that piece of wood done split, otherwise I'll turn into a tripod. Thanks for watching. Thanks as usual to all the subscribers, all the likes and all the comments. It is appreciated you know that. See you on the next one.